This next patient unfortunately has a known primary neoplasm, rule out metastatic disease. Let's look at our images. We only have one, a sagittal T1 non-contrast MRI. The clivus doesn't look so good, does it? Take a gander at the entire image. It's a single image. And we're going to turn our attention to the question. Question number one, the most common metastatic lesion to the pituitary gland or stalk is A, breast and prostate, B, lymphoma and lung, C, breast and lymphoma, D, breast and lung, E, lung and colon. Well, I'll tell you the answer now before we go back to the case. The answer is breast and lung by a long shot. Let's go back and look at our imaging. Why is this not infiltrative nasopharyngeal carcinoma? Because we don't have a mass in the adenoids. Or we haven't shown you anything in the fossa of Rosenmuller or Taurus tuberius. Why isn't it lymphoma? It could be. But that wasn't the question that was asked. And lymphoma is far less common than metastatic disease from the breast and lung. Why isn't it a chordoma? It's not lobulated. It's not cauliflower-like. We didn't show you any T2 hyperintensity. The patient has a known primary, and also that wasn't one of the choices. Chordoma also has a pretty high frequency of calcification and more heterogeneity. So the question was a relatively simple one. You just have to know that breast and lung are going to be the two most common lesions that go to the pituitary gland and the pituitary stalk, even though this lesion went specifically to the clivus. But there's another observation that perhaps you should have made, which is there is a lesion in C2, a metastatic lesion at that. So this is metastasis to the infracellar region, to the clivus, but the point of the case is breast and lung, the most common pituitary and stalk metastases.